Hello, it's Marco here. Welcome to another tutorial of the series from scratch. If you had followed one of my previous tutorials, for example, the fully drivable kinematic motorbike or even the car, you might have noticed that something is definitely missing. And let's play it. So while it's fun to drive around, we are actually missing an engine sound, which makes a lot for a driving game like this. So let's uh, add it. And as usual, we will do it uh, completely from scratch. So the first thing that you need is to install an application called Audacity. It's a free audio editor and you can find it at um, audacityteam.org. So you just go there and download and install it. I've already done it. And the next thing that we need to do is to find a suitable engine loop to use for our bike. There are not many loops around, uh, especially high quality, but we can create our own. And actually all we need is uh, some kind of uh, audio file, which um, has been recorded from a bike. And uh, I found one for you, which is free. So if you go to uh, mixkit.co, which you can see here, and click on uh, sound effects, and then in the search box, add motorcycle engine, and then search. Uh, there are some free samples that we can work with. And actually, if you scroll down after having searched, um, this one sounds good. So racing motorcycle speeding up. Uh, let's listen to it. And I would like you to focus on the last part where uh, we can hear that the RPM of the engine is kind of stable uh, and it's high rev. And that's basically what we need uh, to create our engine sound loop. So let's listen to it. So the last portion is uh, what we want. Um, so let's download it. And save. And now let's open Audacity and import it. So once we are in Audacity, file open. And let's find the WAV file we just downloaded. Open, and here it is. And don't worry if you're not familiar with Audacity, I will show you a couple of commands and a couple of options. So let's play it within Audacity. Should sound as before. Perfect. And actually, the portion here is the one that we would like to use to generate our loop. And you can use maybe a different portion, but we need a bit of high rev because we're going to control the pitch later on in code and it has to be uh, you know stable so you have to feel that the sound is stable in that portion so we can loop it otherwise the loop will not sound that good so if i select this portion by pressing the left mouse button and dragging onto the track and then i go up here where the numbers are uh, right click and use set loop to selection and then right click again the same position and choose loop on off. So what this does is we have created now a custom loop, which we can listen to by pressing the green play button. So let's uh, listen to it and see how it feels. It's fairly good, but uh, not perfect. I'm hearing bit of glitches, you know, when it's, uh, where it's looping. So let's try to refine it. And to do that, we want to you know, zoom in into the portion. So let's uh, actually click this button here, which zooms us into the portion. And maybe let's zoom out a bit. And basically, if you look at the waveform, it's, it's repeating regularly. And what we want to do is to adjust the start and the end of the selection so that uh, if you imagine this waveform being repeated over and over and over the selected portion, it will form a seamless loop, a seamless track. Okay. So what we want to do is actually zoom in into this portion at the beginning. 
and you can also do it with the control and the, the mouse wheel and you see that uh, it's, it's like a waveform you know repeating multiple times and we need to identify you know the, the start of it so what i will do is uh, once the mouse is on the beginning of the selection then i click the left mouse button i can drag it to make it sharper and i'm going to find the point where the wave starts raising and then bounces on the zero and then again and once you know we're there i'm going to do the same and find at the end of the selection you know a portion which looks like this okay so where the wave before it starts raising like this so let's move let's move zoom out a bit move at the end of the selection zoom in and i prefer to do it with the control and the, the mouse wheel and basically um, we need to be at around this point so I can click and drag and basically that should give us a decent loop so we want to uh, listen to it so I'm going to go up here where the numbers are right click and again choose set loop to selection and now if I click on the magnifier zoom out a bit uh, you see that we are exactly looping the selection we just did and let's listen to it sounds pretty good i'm hearing a small glitch i don't know exactly where uh what that is due to but let me zoom in a bit more and see whether we can adjust further so here looks good i'm gonna do control and then mouse wheel and then if we go at the end of the selection yeah so that's where it starts and we have two peaks okay and here we only have one peak and maybe we want to be more in this area where we have the two peaks so it's more seamless so let's drag it there and see whether it uh, so then right click uh, set loop to selection let's zoom out and listen to it whether it sounds a bit better yeah it definitely sounds better so i don't hear the little glitch anymore Okay, now with this selected, what we can do is edit, copy, and now we click once on the empty portion and then edit, paste. And basically this is creating, I have to scroll to the very start, it's creating a track with our selection, new track. And what we can do is mute the track above, we might even close it actually. So let's just press the X to close it. So we're only left with the portion we extracted. And now with this select, and it's already selected, as you can tell by the color, I can do edit, copy, and then control V or edit paste. So we have now two times the same portion that we extracted. And the reason we do that, uh, now let's click on the select button here. So it selects everything. And then up here, we right click and do start loop, set loop to selection. And now let's listen to it. Okay. And you will hear that it sounds continuous. So it's, um, it means we have done a pretty good job in bringing this um, two waveforms together and checking the point and selecting the point where it loops okay so that sounds good so we don't actually need the second one anymore so we can click on it and then press delete to remove it and we are basically if i click and set loop to selection basically left with this looping part which is very good okay now we can export this so i'm gonna do a file export export as wave because that's what unreal uh, supports 
and we're going to use the same name, but I'm going just to append the word loop. Here you don't have to indicate anything, you just press OK and that's fine. So the working audacity, it's concluded. And let's close the application and then switch back to Unreal. Okay, once we are back into Unreal, let's uh, um, go on the content folder, right click uh, a new folder as usual, and let's type in sounds. And then within the sound folder, import, and let's select the loop that we just created, the WAV file. Now remember that the WAV file has to be 16-bit uh, uh, PCM. If it doesn't import it and you get an error, uh, you might have selected the wrong format. So let's play it within Unreal to listen to it. And as you may hear it play only once, so we want to double click to open it and we want to make sure the looping is checked. So it will behave like a loop and it will be played over and over no matter what. Save, close, and now let's play it again and see if it loops. Perfect, so we have our uh, looping sound. Now we can add it already to the bike. So let's uh, go within uh, Blueprints and open the bike blueprint. And what we want to do is uh, click on the root and then add a new component, which is an audio component. Okay, so type audio. Here it is. Let's call it uh, engine sound. And once it's added, we go to the right and under sound, we select the wave file that we just imported and looped. Okay. That's all it needs to be done from here. The rest we will do in code. So let's compile and save. Now zoom out a bit. Uh, you remember that on event tick, we have two portions of code. So the first portion is the movement of the bike. The second portion is uh, the update to the animation blueprint. And actually we can add our sound handling immediately after this one. Okay. So let's zoom in and drag a reference to the engine sound. And now dragging out of it, uh, we want to call two methods. The first one is called set volume multiplier. And let's connect it since we added it. And the second method that we want to use is set pitch multiplier. Perfect. So we have the two methods that we need to manipulate the sound. And let's make this prettier, select Q. So it's all nice and aligned. Now, what we want to do with the sound is uh, uh, first manipulate its volume. And the rational here is when the bike is standing still, we want the volume of the engine to be lower, like it's idle or, you know, you, we don't hear it that much. But of course, when the bike speeds up, we want the volume of the engine to also increase. So to control that, we're going to drag out of the new volume multiplier and use a node that we already used in the past, which is map range plant. Okay. Now, as we just said, um, the current speed is going to be our main input to control the sound. So let's drag it onto the event graph. And actually, let's reflect on the fact that the current speed can be positive when the bike moves forward, but it can also be negative when the bike moves backward. And actually, we want the engine to behave in the same way regardless. So we want to turn this into a value that is always positive regardless whether we are moving forward or backward. And for that, we can use the absolute value function. So this function takes a number which has a sign, either positive or negative, and turns it into a number which is always positive, okay? And we connect this to the value input of the map range clamped. And actually, let's organize ourselves a bit better because we are going to add some more values and variables. So let me put this up here. Now, the current speed goes, as we know, from zero to max speed. So what we want to connect to in range B is max speed. Okay. And then the output is going to be 
the volume that we want the sound to have whenever uh, you know the speed is zero so the bike is uh, just still and at max speed so when we are uh, running at the maximum velocity the bike can have so for um, the case when the bike stands still we want to use a value of 0 3 and you can play a bit with these values and see what sounds good for you but uh, this is what i like at the moment and for the out range b so that's when the bike has the maximum speed we want this value to be one okay so when the bike is idle the volume is going to be basically one third of what this usually is and when the bike is max speed we are using the volume the max volume of the wave file we imported so this is what uh, uh, controls the volume but actually what makes uh, you know for a semi-realistic engine sound is when we control the pitch so what happens in an engine is uh, when the arranging revs up, the engine revs up uh, uh, then the pitch increases and when it revs down the pitch decreases so we want to take the loop that we imported which basically is at constant rpm and change its pitch up when the engine revs up and down when the engine revs down and we don't have engine rpm in this uh, blueprint but we have the speed so we're going to use the speed as a proxy to it okay so basically we can take the med uh, range clamp node and do, select it and control W to duplicate it and then um, max speed is going to be the same so the inputs basically are going to be the same as we already set up for uh, the volume and now that I'm selecting and pressing Q to align everything nicely so let's take this one and route it into the valley input and double click to create a reroute node and it's a bit crisscrossed but that's fine and what we want to adjust a bit uh, when it comes to the pitch multiplier because it works with a slightly different logic are the outer range a and b so for the outer range a let's actually use a 0 4 and for the outer range b let's use a 1.2 now how did i determine this value well i tried it I did some tests and you know this is what sounds good for me you might choose you know different values if you are not happy with that just play it and listen to it and see uh, you know what feels good for you and actually it's time to try it out so let's compile and save and then let's play so this is our idle sound and as we speed up uh, the pitch will go up and the volume as well Actually, what you can see, what you can hear, actually, is that uh, um, yeah, sounds becomes a bit boring when we are uh, at uh, you know the top speed because the top speed is fairly low, so it's maintained for quite some time. So what we want to do is uh, you know also to make the game a bit more challenging and uh, make it sound a bit nicer is uh, well basically two things. So let's go back into the motorbike blueprint. If we move back to the portion where we handle where we handle the input, uh, we want to adjust max speed to make the game a bit more challenging. So we are not always driving at maximum speed, but actually we have to slow down when we take curve. So maybe let's go to 3000 or even 4000. And the other thing is, uh, you know, what I noted is that the engine revs up and down very, very quickly. And this is uh, due to this interpolation speed being four. So what we want to do also to uh, you know, have the engine sound behave in a bit more realistic way is to um, change the interpolation speed and actually lower it. So we're going to use a two, for example, and this will make the engine sound wrap up and down a bit more realistically together with the increased speed that it should also make for a better gameplay and make the game a bit more challenging when coming to a curve that you need to slow down and uh, otherwise you're gonna end up off track so let's try it with these changes play I 
think it sounds uh, yeah, nicer and of course you can play a bit with the valleys and see what it feels good for you um, in this case I might also increase a bit you know, the max speed so the game also becomes a bit more challenging but uh, yeah I think this is a nice way to add the engine sound which uh, you know, sounds pretty realistic uh, even for a futuristic bike and uh, as said earlier you can apply the exact same technique also to a vehicle now what this doesn't take into account is the fact that uh, uh, you know your engine might have gears so what happens when you shift the gear is that the engine is going to rev down and then as soon as the new gear is engaged it will rev up again and so on and so forth so we don't have uh, a gearbox and a transmission in this case so what uh, uh, we might want to do if we want to have that kind of behavior is to add um, you know, simulation of a transmission with the gears shifting up and down. Makes it a bit more complicated. It's not that complicated, but uh, I let you work on it as an offline exercise. And if you have questions, please let me know in the comments and uh, like and subscribe. See you in the next tutorial. Bye.